and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancement because of the kingdom. Because faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. You are genuinely poor when you lack in relationship. In business, they talk about OPM, other people's money. You don't need to have money to build what you need to build. You can use other people's money and build it. They talk about OPI, other people's ideas. You don't have to be very intelligent. You don't have to be. Just find the ones who are intelligent and take the ideas. So they talk about different forms of leveraging. Different forms, things you can do here to leverage your idea, to leverage your business, to leverage your ministry, to leverage anything. They talk about OPE, other people's experiences. You don't have to... Wisdom has nothing to do with age. You know, like they said, the wisdom of Solomon has nothing to do with the age of Methuselah. Solomon was 30 when he started ruling the nation of Israel. And he was wiser than a man that had been 900 and something years old. How? Solomon in the book of Proverbs tells us how he got his wisdom. You know, many of you just heard that Solomon prayed. And God gave him wisdom after sowing that seed. That is half truth. Solomon explained how he got his wisdom in the book of Proverbs. He said, my son, attend to my word. Listen to my counsel so you will be wise. Then he says, because I myself, I was my father's son. And he instructed me. And he brought me up. Solomon was the one that collected all the wisdom of David. Then with prayer, he added something from God that David didn't have and took it to another level. That was the only one that used to do what Mary used to do to Jesus. Sit at David's feet. Learn everything. He was born, uh, you know, the other ones were prince. You know, the pride was too much for them. Ad Adoni, Jab, Solon. They had no time to learn anything. They even thought they were better than their father. They wanted him to die so they can take over. This one who didn't think he could ever be a king. So at least this, my father is a great man. Let me just call it. Other people's experience. That's what mentoring does for you. Just establish mentoring relationships. In your place where you pastor, you don't need to know any other thing. You don't need to have any other anointing. The anointing on me can be functioning in your services. Do you know where the anointing of this ministry is? In the messages. Just Monday to Friday, play the tape, play it, have time to meditate on it. When you get up on Sunday, vomit it exactly. You know what will happen? Your church will grow like my own. Then when you now add the little other things God taught you as an individual, you outgrow me. He said, the works that I do, you shall do. That's why I spent three years mentoring you. So you can come to my level. He said, a disciple is not greater than his master. But after he's perfectly trained, he's like his master. Then when he becomes like his master, that's when overtaking is not allowed. He can now study some other things on his own. Just find out what the man is doing. Do it exactly. Mentoring relationship. In your career, that's what you need. In business, that's what you need. What area of business are you trying to go into? There are men who have made millions in them. All you need is a relationship with one of them. If you are going to be giving him gifts every birthday, don't think you are wasting your money. You are making the biggest investment. You don't have corotara to get something from the bank, but you can buy a bottle of wine. That bottle of wine can give you what bank cannot give you. You have a very powerful uncle, wealthy. He is successful in law practice. He's a son. And you're just beginning in law. And you don't see any reason to learn from him. All you see him is a money bag. I'm coming, uncle. We're, we're having break two weeks. You know, that you didn't give me money. Uncle, I'm coming for you to give me. That's why you are poor. You graduate 15 years after graduation. Where are you in your law practice? But there is a bridge called Fulcrum. <laughs> that can lift that the heavy weight of your vision and take it exactly where you want it to be mentoring narrows the distance between you and your destination mentoring gives you a shortcut there is a long cut this road you are running you've been running see you you're almost fainting there is a shortcut to your prosperity there's a shortcut to where i say i made my first one million while on campus why i made five major contacts relationships and all of them were millionaires 
whenever I hang around them, the kind of things they are talking about, I go back to school. I'm bigger than my campus. I stop thinking like a student. Before you knew it, I had offices. I had employed all kinds of things. Before you knew it, I had given my first two cars away as student. I mean, I gave cars, two cars away as student. I got three cars and rode three cars as a student. I was bigger than the university world. Because the quality of your relationship decides the size of your world. Do you know that 30 minutes with a wise, successful business person can do more for you than one year of reading books? You didn't hear what I said. 30 minutes of sitting with a mentor to dismantle ministry equation can do more for you than one year of reading all kinds of books on church growth or church administration or whatever. Because there are curves on the road to success. And like those of you who have solved mathematics, I was a mass major. There, there are places you get to. It looks like the, the formula they gave you doesn't work anymore. You start having problems. This question is wrong. It's not the question. It's your understanding that is faulty. You call the teacher. The teacher just said, oh, no, no, no. Minus, minus is equal to plus. That's where you failed it. There are minus, minus things in life, in ministry, in business. You get to that point, you lose all your money. You are back to square zero. You wonder, ah, but other people in this land are making it. What is wrong? God! It's not God. It's the fulcrum. I mean, it's the, it's the liver. The business needs to be leveraged. See, you can't meet an opportunity for networking. Because you can walk down. Here is a chief judge of a state. You can walk down to her office. She will put you in prison. Or whatever. She doesn't know you. But here, she recognizes, oh, ah, you may be right, oh, and still go to prison. Most of the people you see in prison, many of them didn't do anything. Before she can even open up to now hear your story, to now even discover that you were, you didn't do that thing, to now start thinking about how, is there any idea, this case is tough, that we can use to help you, to maybe even suggest to you to find this particular lawyer to whatever, and maybe even help you link the lawyer because you might not even have the legal fee to pay. You might not even have the contact. That patience, that ability to, instead of, ah, who is this young man? The way he has been looking at me, he looks like he wants to steal my money. You know, she now relaxes that you're not looking at her to steal her money. You are thinking about, you have a problem. What opened the door? Relationship. I ended up building my first business without putting one cobble. You don't have expertise. People like Ibuenedion own an airline. A man that didn't go to school. How? Employ them. Network with them. So sometimes you have to let go of full ownership of the profit of that idea and share with some other people in order to bring them into it find the one that has the money the one that has the connection the one that has this put them in the team build the dream team and then share the reward return the thing that you are the ceo and you are ending up like big sitting on the biggest enterprise in this whole world meanwhile you're not even a graduate end up marrying a woman with masters in economics, with BSc, whether it's in accounting, three degrees. If we don't start valuing relationships, many things that God commits in our hands will die unborn. All the children in your loin, do you know you are carrying four generations? Not one can come out without a marriage relationship. That's how it is with all the dreams in your heart, all the visions, all the ideas in your mind. There is a person now, the moment that person connects with you, the ideas come alive. The things in you that are looking intangible, flying through your mind like electrons, come alive and take leg and feet and start walking. When you want to prepare a message, after you've got all your revelation, realize that your revelation is not enough. You need to leverage that revelation. How? Other people's revelation. Other people's OPM, they talk about money, other people's money here. It is other people's messages, other people's materials. Listen to it. It will do something to that thing you already have. And at the end of the day, when you come out with the little insight God gave you, see so much impact on people. That's why we need the media. Because it's one of the forces of leveraging. Small ministry, nobody knows. 
put it on air is that affecting millions all over the world that's why we need internet god told you to write a book he gave you the area of life to focus on you don't have all the information you don't need to have all the information network do co-authorship who moved my cheese one minute manager what's the name of my friend ken blancard have you noticed that you hardly find one book he wrote you know why he said that he has the gift of ideas but lacks the gift of communication so he next work with another person i don't mind let's be three names there but let the book be a bestseller maybe you are the one that is very good in writing you know how to package it why don't you network with the one that has the resources in his head the millions come you share it your own is that you don't want to share you are not ready for a relationship if you don't want to share don't marry if you don't want to share don't build friendship if you don't want to share die alone because there is no room for those who don't want to share connection is the key to life relationship is the engine that drives destiny okay let's do one more illustration give it shall be given to you good measure press down running over shall who give to you shall who leverage add leverage to your seed and you will have abundant harvest in other words this man that sows that doesn't have connections or contacts we not have a harvest because angels don't bring the harvest men bring it did you hear what i just said solomon sold a thousand bond offering but how did the harvest come a queen of sheba what was the queen coming to do to solve some problems some questions in her mind so when she carried all her political problems in the nation of ethiopia to solomon solomon first sat her down and demystified all the political problems she was facing in her hometown <laughs> the woman now opened her treasures solomon sold a thousand but how did his 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 prophet come the bible said the king huram of tyre supplied him all the woods all the timber he needed to build god's house i want to ask you how come he could get timber from king huram and you can't the reason is because david his father started a covenant relationship with king huram and the moment solomon mounted on the throne the first thing he did was to service his relationship with god which david his father has already started the second thing he did that's why he went to Giba, was to service his relationship with huram before making new friends let me service the old ones you see your bible your father's friend and your own friend do not forsake because you will need them in the day of adversity they will be closer to you than your own brothers the times you have need your own brothers can't help some of them will abandon you you better have covenant relationships one of the things that god will teach us in this camp meeting is how to build bridges and then we can have dominion then the dominion mandate can work if two shall agree on earth if they agree touching any idea if they agree touching any business if they agree touching any project if they agree touching any crusade <laughs> it shall be done for them because a third party will join them the one that is more than enough let's do one more illustration i'll go the lord talked to me in the night because i didn't plan to go back on this area i wanted to get into the kingdom immediately he said no kingdom is the doing side we are his workmanship <laughs> created in christ jesus unto good work which god has foreordained that we should walk in them kingdom is the doing side god said to me the people will fail if you send them out to do until you first walk on the being side the three steps to your success is being number one number two doing then number three is having you don't have a car it's not important do what i did i didn't bother on getting a car i bothered about finding out who i was i am in christ the being side is about two things one your identity the other is your purpose find out the reason why you are alive find out who you are in christ 
God said to me, you got to talk to them about this love issue. Because that's what gives them security in me. He said, perfect love cast out fear. The doing side, now the being side is about your identity. About who you are in Christ. The doing side is about your assignment. Your purpose and your potential. One is your assignment. The other is the abilities God has given you in order to deliver. When I get to this point, I falter unless I have taken care of being. So in success, being comes before doing. You first become a wealthy person before you actually have the money. God spoke to a barren man. He said, Abraham, your name shall no more be called Abraham. Your name shall not be called Abraham. He said, why? He said, for the father of many nations have I made thee. You are already. He said, where are the nations? He said, don't worry about the having. You will get there. Get the being to enter well. You have to accept who God say you are. Even though you see contradictions in your life. You have to accept God's value concerning your life. Because your identity comes from your source. In the nature of your identity comes from your family. From your father. From the family you come from. That's why they say, who is he? Who is his father? Which family did he come from? Ah, he's, he's, he's a son of nobody. You have to know where you are from. You don't have to know who is your father. You have to know who covers you. You have to know that he loves you because that love is what gives you security. Many of you suffer from identity crisis. There are many here suffering from rejection. You will not have the capacity to do. Because when it comes to doing, I want you to notice something here. Maybe I should show it to you. Mark chapter 9. Find it. Shakaka. Kobole kebo mama. Hiya bolo kasuya. Kabia baba yi kolulu solaya. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Verse 23. Jesus said unto him. That's the man that brought his son that was epileptic. And the disciples have prayed for that child. The child didn't get healed. The demon torment was strong. <laughs> Finally, Jesus gets down there. And the man said, help us. If, if you can do anything, please help us. And Jesus answered and said to him, verse 23. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that what? Say it, all things are possible with God. Because he can believe anything. What is possible to me is not dependent on where I'm born from, who is my father, educational background, and all that. What is possible to me is dependent on my capacity to believe. The limitations in your business are not outside you, they are inside. You see why being comes first. You will not make progress without until you make progress within. God talking about your prosperity said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. He knows that if you don't expand in here, it won't happen without. What is possible to me may not be possible to you. Not because God doesn't want to help you, but because you can't believe that level. My faith can carry millions. Many people who's here, their faith can carry 100,000. When you talk about giving God 100,000, they exercise all the faith they have. They can't see 10,000 inside it. Your limitation is imposed to you by internal forces, not external. There are forces that determine the size of your life. One of them is what we're discussing, your capacity to believe. It begins with your ability to see. Because faith is what, cons is what, is what actualizes visions. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. When he talks about hope, he's talking about visions, ideas, dreams, goals. Faith is what gives substance to dreams. Your capacity to believe. Your capacity to believe.
how worldly will you be is dependent on your capacity to believe how successful will you be it depends on your capacity to believe how many members will be in your church it depends on your capacity to believe it is not the city stop blaming demons in the city and territorial powers is your capacity to believe when your world inside expands all the powers in the atmosphere expands to give you room there is always room for a man who can believe there is always abundance for a man who can believe there is always healing for a man who can believe there is always land for a man who can believe there is always an extra property for a man who can believe don't tell me the whole place is already filled there is no more land there is no more property somebody will lose his land for me to enter the promised land was occupied by the time joshua laid his army there god had to dispossess some people in order to give them a possession can somebody say amen your capacity to believe when i saw that i said lord help me so you are not the one limiting me he said no i can't help you beyond your level of believability i can't help you beyond that it's like i'm the ocean and i want to give you water but the size of your cup determines how much you can carry if i pour myself even though i poured a whole ocean this what you will still carry is a cup i'm heaven that pours rain but what you can carry is your cup size he said the problem is not what i can do or what i can give the problem is what you can handle what you can believe and i said lord help me with a bigger level of believability he said if you want <laughs> faith that is strong faith that is secured faith that is immovable I will show you the secret. I said, show me the secret. He said, the secret is covenant. Understanding of covenant. I said, why? He said, because covenant is about relationship with guarantees. He said to me, faith works by love. Let me give it to you so you can write it down. Your success, your wealth, what you can accomplish depends on your capacity to believe. But your ability to believe, your faith side, depends on your ability to receive and give love. So you see, my friend, I might not have 10 naira in my pocket. And I tell you that I'm buying a car that's worth 2 million. How do you have the confidence, the faith to say that? And in two weeks, you see me with a car. How? The relationships in my life, the level of exchange between those relationships can carry what I have just believed. Learn it and get it clear in your head. The foundation of your faith is your relationships. Pastor Sarah will not have faith to come and ask me to buy her a car when her relationship with me is sour. She can't try it. If you are divorced, if you have fouled up a relationship, you can't have faith in that partner. Faith works by love. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I have to let you go so you can read your Bible. I want to read two dangerous scriptures. You need to see it. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Faith comes by communication. But faith foundation is relationships. When God opens his mouth to talk, some people are frightened. But whenever God opens his mouth to talk to me, I'm excited. You know why? The, our relationship is sound. So I don't expect something foul something irritating to come out of his mouth communication is not the first thing the relationship the platform the altar from where the walls are coming is the first thing the altar from where god speaks to you is the first thing 
when he spoke concerning abraham he said for i know him that he will command his children after him to walk in the ways of the lord so how can i hide from abraham the things that i'm planning to do even though i want to just go and get this city of Sodom and gomorrah destroyed secretly i think i've just got to talk to somebody because he is my friend when God finished talking, Abraham, standing on that same platform, began to argue with God. He said, how can you, are you not the righteous God, the God of the whole earth? How can you do wrong? And God said, hey, what am I doing wrong? Didn't you hear that that nation is very corrupt, they are homosexuals? Abraham said, no. I know they are. But what if there are ten righteous people there? You kill the whole nation because of what that's. What about the ten righteous? God said, no way. No way. God forbid that I will do such a thing. If you find ten, I won't kill them. He said, well, stay here. Let's send the two angels. Why you stay with me here? Let's be talking. Let them go and bring reports. I have to know. And God stood there. The Bible said the two angels went down to Sodom. The first thing they went is facts finding. Gathering. Is there any righteous man here? Can we get up to ten of them? Then they will call. If I, uh, Baba, he said, hello. Uh, he said, ah, they don't reach twenty of the whole nation you know rich do we go ahead and burn it down he said wait i have to talk to somebody first prayer is not the first thing the relationship is the first thing on the power of relationship you can save a nation with your prayer on the power of relationship you can save a bank with your word on the power of a relationship just your phone call can bring a young man out of prison on the power of relationship millions can flow just because you wrote a letter it's not writing the doing comes after it comes after you see it's one of a person just son challenging article he was not frightened afraid of vice president why connection to Asorok. the level of faith you are manifesting you know why many of you find it hard you know nobody is asking for my hand in marriage i don't know pastor you have to pray for me i don't know what i did for god your problem is not faith your problem is relationship with god the bible says perfect love does what cast out insecurities fear the reason you are afraid about marriage you don't know that you know that God loves you. It's about exchange of love. Ability to give, ability to receive it, that determines how far your faith can go. There is a, my last daughter, she doesn't knock before coming into my room. And last time I was with my wife, we were chatting, you know. And um, the door just opens. And Pastor Sarah warns her, this is your daddy's room. Anytime you want to come in here, you must knock. He said, daddy is your husband, but he's my daddy. It's my daddy's room. And so she looks at me. I know the meaning of that. You better add your word to it because she will, she will obey. I added though. She went. Ten minutes after, bah, door open. I looked at it again, but I like that particular. I looked at her, I just turned the other side. I didn't want to say anything. I left two of them to be talking. Are you not the one I told that you should be knocking? Show him. What they call me at home is DP. They are not intimidated. If you like, buy a jet. Now, the guy will go and sit on the stair and be turning it. Jet doesn't intimidate him. Your phone doesn't intimidate him. Your anointing doesn't intimidate him. Your revelation doesn't intimidate him. Your power doesn't intimidate him. Why? I'm connected. He's my daddy. Why are you shaking like this? Why are you so shaking? You can't believe for anything. You see a storm, you shake. Jesus will turn and say, Ah, where is your faith? Don't you understand that I'm there? No, he's that one this guy doesn't trust me. Why are you so frightened like this? Why are you feeling so dejected like this? Your father abandoned you. It's not important. Somebody who is more than man has accepted you. 
they have psychological treatment for insecurity and all these emotional bruises those things can kill you permanently discovering who you are in christ finding out how much he loves you finding the value that god places on your life we dis <laughs> we disconnect all of those things that are attached to your soul that is trying to knock you down it is what is called in motivational speaking auto suggestion that is actually in psychology they call it auto suggestion everybody has an internal voice that speaks to him when you want to do something big that voice tells you you're no good you can't when you come out to preach it tells him nobody likes what you are saying you're not making any impact it's not the devil it's you but how did you get that kind of voice destroying your own self harming your own faith that's why many of you don't have faith what is choking your faith is a voice inside you it's a negative voice he doesn't believe in you but how did you get it out of rejections out of negative words spoken to you over the years out of things that happened to you that are negative he now left a program a software inside your system that keeps talking to you god start talking to you that i want to give you the best of husband the thing tells you who where is the husband now you it's not god or is the devil talking to you when the devil talks he tells you to believe it when god talks he tells you he's the devil but you know somebody like me i have an internal voice that talks to me each time i say i can't that voice says, no you can i will help you i'm there would you go up i said no lord but i have not studied well i don't have enough message i'm not sure i have something to offer he said no 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 you don't have to have enough all you need to do is trust me i will speak through you i'm with you i said lord what i'm making that journey i don't know what will happen on the road he said no i will be with you don't worry about the own robbers i will scatter them even if they're operating at the moment your car is near and i'll make sure I, I give them another assignment somewhere else he said a thousand will fall at your right and ten thousand at your right after you pass they can continue he said your name is not in the list of death it's not in the list of destruction because i've covered you by the shadow of my wings that's why i have so much faith I have an internal voice that keeps bo boosting me up how do you learn to develop that voice through love when you get a revelation of what god how much god loves you what he has done to cement his relationship with you and the kind of relationship he has created between himself and you it's not a relationship of chance it's not a loose association it's a covenant relationship it's one with guarantees god can't go back on his word concerning you god can't turn his back on you god can't go back on his promises which he has made over your head he said let every man be a liar but let god be true that was what finally helped a doubting man called abraham he couldn't believe anything that's what finally induced the force of faith in him and the moment he could believe his aged body and his wild body that has, that has become dead came alive again because faith is a creative force it is by faith that god framed the universe and with faith even what does not exist will be created for you first john chapter 4 verse 17 says, herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness or confidence in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world he said he that is that fear that is insecure is not yet perfected in love what we kill in the medicine that cures that is no psychological treatment it's exposure to love and then the commitment to start giving love out The foundation of our relationship with the father is not what you did or what you didn't do i want you to notice that it's not because you did a good work the foundation of of my relationship with my kid is based on my relationship with my my wife any family where there is divorce go and check it things are not the same for the kids the first thing is that before creation the father and the son signed a covenant that guaranteed the welfare of the children when they come 
that none of us will go back on our words to each other and on the basis of that none of us will go back on our commitment to the kids the father now discussed with jesus he said i have looked into the future and i have seen that after creating man that they will fail the son said i'm willing to go and die and offer my life for them for their redemption because we can't lose our family the father the father said this is why i love you eternally because you're willing to lay down your life he said now you know it's just like following your wife to the maternity ward where they are delivering after you watch her go through the pain of bringing forth children it takes your commitment to her your love to another level many of you husband needs to test and see what it means because the side the side called sex is the sweet side go and see what conception is the relation between jesus and the father was the sweet side until he got to the cross where he had to release the children the man was in pain when he got to a point he turned and said father father why has that forsaken why are you allowing me to go through this alone you see some women saying i will never have sex again in my life I never again no man will touch me again but after that child comes out and she picks that child and looks at that child he says, you are worth all the pain and that child gives a smile you are worth all the suffering just to have one more like you i will do it all over again do you know that if you are the only sinner in this world left and let's assume that the original death the one he died two thousand years ago does not cover you jesus will still be willing to come one more time just for you first time jesus appeared to me i was 12. he said to me just 10 percent revelation of how much i love you your whole life will be altered he said i bet you that you might even finish your work on earth and not go beyond that 10 percent yet if you can just get that 10 percent he said many don't have one percent of it because the bible talks about the love of god that passes all oh, understand it's so high i can't get over it it's so deep i can't get into it it's so wide i can't get around it it's so long romans chapter 8 i want to close Camp meeting has started for many of you. I said camp meeting has started for many of you. Because your believability has just been cured by an injection called love medicine. Before you start telling people, go have dominion. They won't have faith to have. Where is it at the salon? Go and take your cities. You have to make sure that they are alright first. <laughs> He said, let's make them in our image after our like let them be children let's be in love together then we'll tell them go and have dominion on that basis it will work before you start giving instruction love husband love your wife he tells you first as christ love what the church put in another way what he's telling you is love your wife the same way jesus loves you you know how he's having patience on you have patience with her you know how he forgives you forgive her before he tells you to be holy he said be ye holy then he refers you to your foundational relationship what is making our work with god tick is not even our direct relationship with him is the relationship the father and mother entered into they are in a relationship where divorce is not even a, an idea where marriage is lived at its peak and then we are children born in a family that is so full of love where both the father and the mother are so self-sacrificing so caring we are the ones brought up in that home so no child raised in this house should suffer from insecurity we should be the one bold when we go out in the society we are so full of love we are the ones changing the world with a touch of love we're the ones so full of confidence we believe in ourselves because we know where we are from we know the kind of family we come from we know who our father is we know what he can do that's why we are so confident like this
People say, where did you get the faith to challenge Goliath? When you know who my dad is, you know why I can challenge Goliath, even if he grows ten times taller. The power to do comes from the power to be. And the power to be comes from your ability to believe. For he said, <sighs> he came to his own people, his own people receiving not, but as many as receive him, as many as are willing to have this relationship with him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to those who believe in his name. When I believe, I become. When I become, there is capacity to perform. When I believe, I become. When I believe, I can accomplish. When I believe, I can have. Even if all the food in the world finishes, I will still have enough to eat. Why? The one that owns the universe has a budget for me. I'm not just one of those creatures existing on planet Earth. No. I am in the family budget. He knows me not as one of the members of the church. He knows me by name. He said he has engraven me upon the palms of his hands. I'm just expressing outwardly what my backward internal voice is telling me all the time. That's why I have faith that is strong. That's why. That's where I got the boldness to start laying hands on cripples. To start laying hands on dead people. Is this back up thing. That's why I can believe for anything. Have this vision and know that it will come to pass. He said he has engraven me upon the palms of his hands. I'm just expressing outwardly what my backward internal voice is telling me all the time. That's why I have faith that is strong. That's why. That's where I got the boldness to start laying hands on cripples. To start laying hands on dead people. Is this back up thing. That's why I can believe for anything. Have this vision and know that it will come to pass. Romans chapter 8. Jesus talking. He said, Father, you have loved me before the foundation of the world. Then in verse 23, he said that the world may know that you have sent me and that you have loved them even as you have loved me. You have loved them even as you have loved me. In other words, what you have for me is what you have for them. The place I occupy in your heart is the place they occupy in your heart. No difference. The way you treat me is the way you treat them. The way you answer my prayers is the way you answer their prayers. The way you value me is the way you value them. If you didn't value them, you will not sacrifice me for them. You sacrifice me to have them. In order to show them that you have as much value for them as you have for me. Say it with me. Father, you have loved me before the foundation of the world. I was in your mind before you created the universe. It's because you were thinking about my arrival that you created this beautiful planet. After you got the house furnished, you brought me forth. I want to thank you for I'm fearfully <laughs> and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. 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 Is it getting better? Is it getting better? Are you feeling more secured? Yes, Can you believe for more now? He yes, said, having boldness to come into the holiest of all. Not fear to come. Because in the business of dominion, the bold conquers. God had to talk to Joshua. He said, be bold and courageous. For I, the Lord your God, I'm the one that will be with you. I will be there in the battle. So when you see giant, his head is touching the sun. Know that I'm beside you. Know that your faith will be based on your revelation of your connection with me. Know that. 
that I will be there before your glory. I will be there before the mountain. No one will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Jesus talking the same thing to us, said I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that you might boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What can man do to me? I don't know who is against you in your office. I don't know who is against you in life. Know it! I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you can boldly say, that Goliath will become bread to me. He wouldn't know what slapped him. He will find himself on the ground. I will never leave you. He didn't say, I will, I, will, I will leave you sometimes and come back. This is covenant. It's no promise. It was signed in blood. That means it cannot be reversed. That's why revelation of covenant is what anchors your faith. It stops shaking. He stopped moving about with the waves of life and the circumstances of life. Revelation of relationship anchors it. The greatest revelation ever given to man on relationship is the revelation of covenant. There is nothing higher or deeper than that. It's where relationship has guarantees. There are no failures. Because you can't fail and be alive. If God will break his covenant, he will cease to be God. You have to know what is backing God's commitment to you. This is the end of this part. Please play the next tape in the series.